What's cranking wieners? Good morning. Texas is drunk again. Woke up this morning and it's still winter apparently. It's gonna be like April and I'm gonna wake up and there's gonna be a frozen tornado heading towards my house. Matter of fact, last video we filmed, um, a tornado was, I mean, miles away from my place. Absolute freak of nature. Absolute disaster of a moment. Luckily nothing happened. There are some people in my neighborhood that got wrecked, which is very sad. I do feel for them. Funny enough, we were out fishing during that tornado, so it just goes to show how dumb I am. Anyway, that's not the point of today's video. The focus is the fact that we're doing something that you guys have been asking that we do for freaking forever. Went in the barn this morning, actually late last night, got some things rigged up, and uh, we wiped the dust off the old yaks. Actually, Caleb asked me this morning, he's like, when's the last time you used these? And I'm like, dude, don't ask me that question. I have no idea. It's probably been over a year since we filmed the kayak fishing video, and it's something I need to get more in the habit of doing because there's so many freaking lakes around here in DFW that kind of require you to use a kayak. So many ponds, so many streams, so many rivers where you can't put the, you know, the big London. And as much as I would love to fish off this thing every day, it can get boring, it can get mundane. And this is not how I got started. I didn't get started fishing off of it. I got started fishing off of kayaks I used to borrow. I did a lot of bank fishing, pond hopping. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go to some areas where you gotta put the truck in four by four, you gotta get muddy, down and dirty, into these backwood zones to catch some big old bass. So, Caleb's gonna be joining me on this one. And we're gonna see if we can have ourselves a McFrickin' day. Stay tuned, wieners, and let's go crank. All right. Let's do this thing. What the heck? Well, Caleb wasted no time at all catching a fish. Was that your first cast? Nope, first cast. Cool, why don't I just film it and then you fish? Cause I clearly can't, I'm not good. I'm not good at filming today. This is like my third attempt at an intro. You guys probably think that I do everything in one cut, but I don't, I have a hard time some mornings talking in front of the camera. Here we are, Backwoods Glory Hall. This thing is sick. I've never been here before. Usually we're fishing like urban spots, but we figured we'd uh, bounce over to a rural honey hole and do a bit of dangling and not only do some dangling, but do some dangling on the ax. This has been such a heavily requested video by you guys. John, go out in the ax, go out in the ax. And I feel bad that I haven't used these things enough. They've just been collecting dust in my barn, but that all changes today. This is our spot for the day. We've got the whole lake to ourselves. It's a pretty clean water ditch. There's some good vegetation. Apparently it's loaded full of two to three pound bass. Nothing huge, but we might come across a giant fish today because it is spring and those big girls are moving up to get sloppy in the shallows. Along with that too, we're gonna be tossing around the all new blazing worm. You on again? There's a lot of fish in here. If you live up north, down south, out east, or far west, definitely pick some of these up. This is an amazing grass soft plastic. We designed this lure to basically burn over vegetation. You can hop it on the bottom. It's great on a shaky head, good on a Texas rig. We've even used this for, you know, bladed jig trailers or swim jig trailers. Rackley the other day was using it as a spinnerbait trailer and absolutely wanking on them. So if you guys wanna pick some of these up, link down below, we're gonna be using them today too. So rather than just talking about how good they work, we're just gonna show you. So without further ado, let's get these yaks splashed and see if we can go crank on some fish. Stick with us, stay tuned, and let's have a freaking day. Let's get this bass bread. Isn't that what kids say? Get, let's get this bread. Oh my God. And we're off. I'll tell you what, it feels a little weird being in a yak. I miss it though. Some of my favorite videos I've ever filmed have been out of a kayak. Actually, I filmed the bass fishing video out of a yak in South Africa. I caught a largemouth in South Africa. That was crazy. So here we are. The ditch. We're going to throw a bunch of different lures today. Like I said, I want to try to catch a couple good ones on the blazer worm. We've also got the new nuke punch, which came out about a month ago. It's a perfect lure for this lake. This lake is full of grass, full of aggressive largemouth. The spawn is on. So it's one of those type of scenarios in which a fast moving worm like the blazing worm will get a nice tug. So even though I just mentioned everything about the blazer worm, I think I'm gonna pick up the lipless. <laughs> it's a nice little creek over here. Wow, this grass is delicious. Makes Poppy hungry.
Oh, there we go. I'm on. Absolutely throttled me. First fish of the day. First fish of the day on a custom painted clutch. Ketchko did the one off uh, paint color for these clutches, and this is like a one of one. But yeah, that's a color. We should come out with that color. That color's sweet. Click, look at that. First fish of the day on the bright red clutch. Let's go. Okay, let's do this. Oh wow, I look like a character that has not been unlocked yet. And I'm getting blown to the bank. How savory. Oh wow, I thought I just had another one. You missed it. It was sick. It was a really nice one. I'm on again, I'm on again, I'm on again, I'm on again, I'm on again. Let's go. Oh, it came off. Bunch of little buck bass must be moving up shallow. I was burning that in. They really don't care. It's that time of year where you can pretty much... Is that another one? I'm on again. Oh my God, I just had another one. That's like it's stacked. I'm gonna get a hundred comments saying, John, you're holding the paddle wrong. Clearly, that is obvious. The goal today is to not only film an absolute heater for you guys, but I have a mission and that mission is to catch one nice one, one like 18 inch bass to kind of get the rust off my off my gills. Can't tell you the last, I couldn't even, I don't even remember the last time we went and caught a big bass on a, on a yak. It's probably been, I mean, decades, if not millennials. Probably just decades, I don't remember. There's Caleb. We've got one so far. I lost another one. Things are looking good. They're biting. They're just buck bass. You gotta weave through these little these little males in order to get to the big girth business. I've I've seen a little fun one nice one today. Feel it in my bones. There we go. On. Nope. Grass. Clearly I don't know what a bite feels like. There we go. That's a fish. We're on, oh wow. Little stinkies. Little stinkies. Good fun though. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what was that? Stinky number two. Little buck bass. Bye bye. Oh, that's one. That's a fish. Oh, it came off. <laughs> There's so little, it feels like grass. I was convinced I didn't have one. Just shaking them off over here. This whole lake seems to be a pretty shallow grass flat, which is not a bad thing. Definitely makes it difficult to keep that lipless in the strike zone. Gotta keep that rod tip high. Is that a fish? It's either grass or a fish. I'm not feeling head shakes. It's a fish. We're hooked up. A little bit, a little bit bigger too. Why am I coughing? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's what's up. Got a little stinky. Big mouth. Little body. Barely hooked. Nice little fish. Yes, sir. We're making our way up in the world here. So little dude. Take care. Bye bye. Nice fish, a little bit better. We got out of the wind a bit so we could keep control of the, the yaks. And uh, that was like my fourth cast on this shallow little grass flat. He doinked it. Good stuff. Wonder if there is any big fish in here. That fish seemed really stunted. Big head, but wasn't very long. Maybe the genetics just aren't here. It's a good excuse for not catching giant fish. Ah, it's just the genetics. Must just be a small fish like, no, you just catch small fish. Don't blame it on the lake. Oh, there we go. Right up the kayak. Oh, wow. Gorgeous fish. Kind of reminds me of a Northern Illinois bass. Wow. Hammered it head first, too. That's when you know they're getting aggressive. Future 10 pounder going back. Bye bye, buddy. I'm gonna switch back to the bladed jig. I don't think this spot is deep enough for the lipless. Roll this over the grass. There we go. That took no time at all. Just made a minor adjustment and we're on. I think that lipless was just getting in the grass. They weren't seeing it. Another guy. This is fun. Yes, sir. Another one. Itty, but we'll take it. As long as that rod's bending, I'm happy. 
All right, we're gonna hop off for a second, just kind of explore the bank. I'm noticing these fish are really, really shallow. And with there being a pretty imminent force of wind going on, it's blowing me around. I can't really hone in on a specific spots. So I'm gonna re-rig some stuff, throw some more shallower tactics, or I'm gonna get some rigs geared towards shallower tactics and just see if we can find them along the bank. Just gonna fish part of that tree there, get back on the ax and see if we can uh, catch a, a good in. But so far this lake is cool. I'm, I can't wait to, you know, come here on a day where it's a little bit warmer, a little bit calmer and actually dissect this place, but we still have a lot of time. So we're gonna hammer. I'm just slowly starting to figure it out. The edge of this pond seems to have a lot of fish, but it's very shallow. So I'm kind of limited as to what I can throw. I think what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna throw a weightless rigged blazing worm. It's actually kind of the technique we're catching a lot of fish at, fish with in Florida. Rack of kind of nine doing this. Good kill. Oh, there we go. Oh, I just had one. He hammered it. I think they like this. It's just a perfect technique for this kind of shallow grassy area. You don't want to throw something too heavy because it'll just get lost in the grass. They're not able to key in on that, but something like a weightless blazing worm right above their heads is it's ideal. Absolutely ideal. I can't believe I missed that fish. I said it looked like a dork. Come on. Oh, there we go. Got it. Got him. There we go. We're on. Blazing worm strikes just on this big old flat. Not terrible. A lot more fun on the light action spinning too. There we go. Nice. <laughs> They're a little cold. They're not fighting too much. Oh, just barely skin hooked too. Nice fish. B -b -b Blazing worm. Thank you, dude. That was fun. I got to hear my drag peel a little bit. Catch them, kiss them, put them back. Skinny water bass. It's so cool. So here's what I'm throwing right now. This is it. It's really simple. This is a, probably the most inexpensive rig you could use with any soft plastic because you don't need a peg, you don't need a weight, don't need anything fancy. I'm just using a four-aught heavy hammer hook with a blue baby blazing. This will all be linked down below, the hook, the line, and then also, of course, the blazing worm. He about, he about blazed that freaking thing right into existence. I was looking at luck yesterday. Oh, here we go. Oh my God, next cast. Literally next cast. I like just pressed record. They might also be moving up as the day progresses too. Like there's going to be some fish that feel that warmth up shallow and they're just going to make their way into the, uh, into the flat zone. I'm going to hold them like a big and you take my picture, Caleb. The best is when you, you, when you hold them like that. Got to show all their dorsals and fins. Thank you, Jimmy. I'll catch you when you're 10 pounds. In a previous video, I said, uh, they got memed. I said, I'll catch you when you're, or talk to me when you're 12. I meant 12 pounds. People took that the wrong way. So I gotta be careful. Now I'm saying I'll, I'll catch you later when you're 10 pounds or 12 pounds. I gotta specify what I'm talking about. Blazing worm down, gotta get a new one. There's one. A bluegill or something. Oh no, it's a bass. There you go. A little bit better, honestly. Felt like a bluegill bite at first. I was like, oh, that's not anything worthwhile. <laughs> nice. This lake is definitely, it's got a stunted problem, stunted fish problem. When you have too many little fish in a pond, they, they compete each other and it kind of makes it difficult for those larger fish to succeed and grow. You can tell too, because this fish has got a pretty big mouth, but his body is small. This might actually be like a three-year-old fish, but because of that stunting issue, they just can't get very big. Nonetheless, they're pulling drag. That's all we can ask for. And we get to watch him some way because the water's so freaking clear. Look at that. Boom. He's gone. Take care, Elroy. Good stuff. Another one. There we go. Maybe a little bit better, honestly. Uh, kind of fighting weird. <laughs> what the heck? Why is he coming in like that? Dude, what the? What's going on? There he goes. He was just, he was just circling into the, into the bank. Oh my God, he absolutely choked it. They're in love with this little worm. Right in my hands, that's great. 
<laughs> but he didn't know what to do. He's like, should I fight? Or like, how, how do I, how do I uh, pull back? Another squeaker. So pretty though. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with that fish. He's, you know, screw loose. Kind of reminds me of myself, honestly. Back on the yak yak. Woo. I put a, uh, a blazing worm on the back of my bladed jig. Got a nice chartreuse look to it. The blazing worm is probably like the most versatile, and that sounds really corny and cliche, but it is seriously like one of the most versatile soft plastic things we've come out with in the recent years because it's like one of those things that you can drag, you can burn it, fish a weightless like we are today. You can use it as a trailer. There's not too many of our lures where you can do that. Um, it's got a really awesome capability of just kind of being the jack of all trades type worm. You know, whereas a shaky head or like a straight tail worm, like the slim shake is, you know, you could do a lot with it, but not as much as the blaze. So we're gonna see if we can get some rolling this thing around out of the trailer, kind of switch things up. Seems like they kind of fell off on it too. Like maybe they got a little smart or they might want something that's a bit more aggressive. Like they want to chase it down. So I'm gonna try this for a bit, see if this is something that they're interested in. You gotta play with different tactics this time of year. So it'll change. Like, you know, they might be like completely shut off in the morning and then all of a sudden like 12 p.m. boom, they start feeding. It's all about that water temp, wind direction, barometric pressure, moon phases. I don't know, or you can just go out and fish. That's what I like doing. I see good weather, I'm like, yep, let's go. Oh. Paddle down. On the blazing with the trailer. Wow, that is a sickly looking fish. Poor guy. You really could have used an actual meal, couldn't you? Dude, the thing's paper thin. Oh, a little ugly. There's big uglies and there's little uglies. That was a little ugly. I kind of feel bad. He's probably pretty bummed. He's like, damn, that would have been a really awesome snack for me. He could have used it too. Oh, that's a decent one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This one's actually pulling a bit of drag. There we go, absolutely pummeled the clutch. Wow, it feels good to get something over a pound. I mean, this fish is probably a pound and a half, just barely, but it's a much better bass. Dude, freaking choke, look at this. Just choked the clutch. That's epic. You gotta love it. You know, you just gotta love it. Doing big old drifts in a little farm pond with tons of grass. So much fun. So much fun. Brings me back to my roots. See ya, buddy. Cool. My biggest bass ever, dude. That's my PB. Thank you. Thank I'm so glad you're here to witness that. Oh, Yags are back on the old truck. That got to be too much for me. It was really messing with my head. I don't mind wind if I'm in a bass boat, if I'm in a big boat, or if I'm fishing for the bank. But something about being in a kayak in this right here can be so frustrating. Um, I think I'm gonna go online tonight and figure out some options to maybe kind of manage around this wind because I don't wanna stop making yak videos. We just started. It wasn't the most top tier day, but we had fun and it was like kind of a nice ease back into this genre of fishing. And a lot of you guys I know don't have a boat, saving up for a boat, have a kayak, have a canoe, maybe fish on the bank. And this is why it's so cool to film these videos and kind of get back to my roots and, you know, really do the kind of stuff that you guys can do just about anywhere you live. You know, lower 48, even, you know, Hawaii and Alaska, you can bring a kayak out in a pond or a lake and go crank them. We almost cranked them. They had a pretty good day. I don't want to dumb it down too much, but yeah, I think I'm going to invest in some shallow water anchors possibly, or I don't know, maybe a 50 pound anchor, something that keeps me in the spot and doesn't let me move around because literally we get to this bank and then within five minutes, I'd be on the other, other side of the lake. So it's getting kind of hectic. But anyway, before we close out today's video, I wanna share with you guys my top three spring baits. It is spring, no matter where you're at, these baits will catch you fish. These tactics, these tactics will put fish on the bank or in the boat or in the kayak. And I just wanna share with you guys some stuff that I've had personal success with in the past because, you know, this is all about entertaining, but we also wanna teach you guys how to catch fish. That's what I'm trying to say. Three baits. This goes for pond anglers, boat anglers, people just get into bass fishing. Maybe this is something that you can use. 
my god, my baits just flew off. Maybe this is something that you can use at your local waterway. These are baits I've had immense success on. First one I want to talk about, which we had a ton of luck on today, is that little worm on a weightless hook. I think a lot of people get so caught up in, you know, you have to put a weight on a soft plastic or it has to be a jig trailer or a spinnerbait trailer. This is a prime example in which you can catch a lot of fish, cover a lot of water, and get, get a lot of really solid bites if the bite is tough. Today we were using the blazing worm. You can do it with just a regular five inch lunker log. As a kid growing up, when I would, whenever I was fishing like really shallow water, like a foot of water, I would even use like a craw bait. So you can use like a crack and craw, just completely weightless rig. And it kind of feels weird to fish it, especially in the wind. Like, am I hitting the bottom at all? And that's kind of the point. You're just kind of letting that thing float around, do its thing without any sort of weight manipulating the action. But try this out, you know, use light line, 10 pound, 12 pound fluorocarbon, a bigger main line, maybe like 20 pound braid spooled up on your spinning rod. I recommend throwing like weightless gear on spinning setups, but you can do it on casting too. Just know that you're gonna get a lot more distance and a lot more finesse with the spinning. So there we have it. That's one that you guys saw work today. Like I said, blaze worms will be linked down below. So if you guys wanna try this out, definitely give it a go. The next one, cover water. Covering water is so freaking huge this time of year. You know, especially if you're bank angle, you can't just jut to the next side of the lake. You have to move around so much. So one of my favorite baits to cover water is a clutch, a half ounce lipless crankbait. Colors vary. Growing up, I threw a lot of shad based colors. A lot of lakes in Illinois had a lot of shad in them. So I would stick to like a sexy shad pattern. But with lakes like this, we've got grass. It's a little bit clear. There's vegetation and there are cross present. I like the red. For some reason, they key in on the red. Oranges too, like oranges and browns work really good when that water's cool, but that, when that water heats up, I like sticking to more of a shad pattern. You know, like I said, uh, like a shotgun shad or something of that nature. So that's another good one too. You can burn it. Like there's really no perfect speed for that, for that bait. You can, you know, yo-yo it. You can bring it over the grass. You can bring it into the grass and burn it out, reel it fast. I mean, it's a bait that you can virtually fish from zero to hundred feet of water. So that's one, one of the reasons why I like it so much. And it's just great for a big bass too. The last one, the last one, which we had a really good day on uh, throwing is like a bladed jig. You know, the clickbait, some of the other really good bladed jigs out there work for me as well. I like throwing trailers that are a bit offset. This is a little bit too distinct for me, maybe something a little bit more natural. Matter of fact, what I like, what I've been doing actually recently has been throwing the saucy from the 3.8 and 3.3 in this uh, sexy swimmer color, or sexy shimmer color, my apologies. Yeah, it just looks really good on an all white bladed jig. I like throwing chartreuse in white or all white with a bit of silver and just throw a little swim bait on the back of that. Or you could throw the uh, the blazing worm as well. We make a white color, which is actually probably a little bit more seamless and color matched with this. Uh, if you're fishing shallow, shallow water, like a foot to three feet, throw a three eighths. If you're fishing deeper, like, you know, five to eight foot, throw that half ounce. A lot of people are confused as to why their bait, you know, isn't getting hit when they're throwing a half ounce in a foot of water. That's because that bait is dredging the bottom. You want it to be up off the bottom a little bit. So that's why today we were, when we're fishing the shallow water, I'm throwing the three eights and we got some good bites on that as well. Matter of fact, I just realized we got fish on everything I talked about today. So with that being said, get some of these lures, head out to your local pond, drop the boat in and go crank them. Spring is the time to get your biggest bass ever, to have your best fishing day ever. Just not too long ago, we caught 34 pounds of bass, a seven pounder, an eight pounder, and a handful of sixes. I mean, like what the heck? You know, that's just Texas in general, but you can also go out there and go crank them yourself. But, oh my God, I feel like I'm out of breath. I just explained a lot. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something out of that. We're peacing out though. Signing out, we gotta get ready for a huge day of filming tomorrow. We got zero mile per hour winds, 84 degrees, and we're going to one of my favorite lakes. So keep on the lookout for that one. I'm peacing out though, signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.